standing as we open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beginning of a new week, a new chance to meet with you in your house, to hear your word freely proclaimed. We pray, Lord, that we freely apply it to our hearts. We ask, Lord, as we are advancing through the Christmas season, that we don't, in our rush to get many extra things done, forget why we are enjoying Christmas, why this is such a special time for all people, because God came to man, you came to us, and you gave us worth and value and purpose and salvation. We pray, Lord, that that is very much in our hearts and our minds and in all our actions and thoughts. We ask, Lord, even this morning, that you would help us to worship more completely and more fully than ever before. We thank you in advance for all the good things that you're working through us as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I've been doing the two songs in a row. Okay, we'll do the second song, but before I uh, get to, was it 190? Well, I think it was uh, Joy to the World. Is that the one? One ninety four. Okay. But before we get there, I had a call yesterday, uh, just a random call from James Reef, a uh, pastor that we helped uh, get started um, or restarted on the Eastern Shore, the Chestertown, and uh, of course he asks about everything and uh, uh, he gives greetings to all of you and. Uh, he would like, if possible, to even visit uh, here in the pulpit uh, sometime in January or early February. Um, uh, you can pray uh, in his case, but he's struggling like all of us, but uh, he does not have uh, people in his church very willing or able to just teach. So all the teaching ministry is falling on him, which he gladly does, but uh, he feels like he and his wife have uh, the load of everything. So you can pray uh, that God uh, enables people to uh, step up in that capacity. And I, uh, want, and I said to him, and I said, one of the strengths that Pastor Andrew had, one of the many strengths, was that he allowed us to uh, grow in our, that we could do things and serve imperfectly and grow in that and then uh, get better and better, whether it's music or whether it's stepping up and leading. And, and I really, really appreciate how uh, that has helped our church. Um, so much so that Pastor Andrew could always be confident whether he had to miss a Sunday night because some visiting took extra long or when he was out for his uh, injury or to his back, uh, he did not have to worry about the leadership here. And uh, that's the way it should be. Uh, he trained us up. Are we eloquent and perfect? Absolutely not. But our heart is with you. And uh, pray for us as leaders, pray for uh, Pastor James and on the Eastern Shore there. Um, they're trying to do as well as they can. Uh, they even got their study school restarted uh, about a month ago. But uh, it's hard. Okay. Uh, joy to the world. You'll have to know this one.
morning. Good morning. So a few announcements this morning. Um, Wednesday, December 9th at 7 p.m., have a prayer meeting and devotional at the Elders Month Home. And also, there will be a midweek message released on, on YouTube. Um, Sunday, December 13th at 10.30, um, our guest speaker next week will be Pastor Matt Robinson. Um, and um, just a note this morning, we have Pastor Sam here with us this morning. We were supposed to have Pastor Sean Coffey here, but yesterday, yesterday they had to take his wife to the hospital for chest pains. Um, and, and last night he texted me and said that they took her. This morning he texted me and said that um, she was being released, but she had to go back for an echocardiogram. They think that there's something going on with her heart. Um, I don't know her name, but please pay, pray for Pastor Sean Coffey's uh, wife. Um, he was also, maybe later he'll, he'll be coming uh, to speak for us, but we'll see. But please keep his wife in prayer, him and his wife in prayer. Um, Monday, December 14th at 7 p.m., uh, we're going to have a church council meeting in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Tuesday, December 15th at 7 p.m., the women's Bible study at the home of Jessica Myers, uh, Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World, Chapter 12. Uh, the offering envelopes uh, for next year are on the table in the vestibule. Uh, for those that have a church account, uh, please pick yours up on the way out. Um, the Olympian Club is to start up again on January 10th. Uh, please see Eric um, if you'd like to help with Olympian Club. And I heard that um, yesterday we had the um, Make a Car event at Jess's house. I heard that that went really well, so we thank everyone who was involved in that. We really appreciate that. And uh, I'm sure those that received cards will appreciate that as well. Uh, also yesterday we had, I'm sorry, go ahead there. I was say, the kids also helped decorate the church. Oh, very good. So the decorations in the church, the they kids. couldn't quite reach the star, so that might need some assistance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we appreciate it. I was it. already told that I was. <laughs> Hank always gets to put the star on top of the Yeah, and I clean the refrigerator top, too. <laughs> <laughs> church. It looks good. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, teen shopping trip was yesterday as well, and Callie and one of her friends went. We went to White Marsh Mall. Um, there, when we got there, there was hardly anybody there. By the time we left, there was quite a few people, but uh, definitely a big impact there as far as how many people were in the mall. Um, also, Pastor Gary Kramer will be with us. We're not sure when. Uh, I think I mentioned that before. Him and his wife were sick. Uh, last I spoke to them, uh, I didn't speak to them this past week, the week before. Uh, they were still in Texas, I believe. He was traveling, or he may have just left there. He, they were traveling a little bit each day, uh, headed up this way. Um, he will be with us at some point, but I'll speak to him. But please keep him and his wife in your prayers as well as they have not, not been feeling well. So, are there any other announcements that I missed? Hank? Oh, I'm sorry. That many. I was just going to let everyone know Jeff uh, had a fall yesterday and oh, he's, no. he's having some issue with his knee. He thinks he might mess his knee up, so no. just keep him in prayer. Yeah, okay, pray for Jeff Cook. <laughs> um, yeah, his knee. Um, Jeff's a little unsteady walking and, you know, the problem with the knee could be a setback. Yeah. So, yeah, pray for, for Jeff there. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements? And Patty's surgery is Wednesday and pre -op, Tuesday at Johns Hopkins, and we're very, very pleased with what God's provided for the right doctor in, in every which way, and we're looking for a complete good outcome. Very good, very good. Please keep praying for Patty. Um, so Wednesday is the is the surgery, and God has led them to good doctors that they're happy with, and. Um, we trust that he's led them to the right ones with the right skill set and so on and so forth. So, any other announcements? Okay. I did not bring my paper up that said everything so that I don't forget anything. Well, then so, you didn't forget anything. Yeah, I must not have forgotten anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, are we ready for special music then?
that we do next? See, this is why I write everything down. So, okay, oh, and we have one hymn left, right? At the end. At the end. Okay, so you're going to save that for the end of the service. All right, so at this time, let's have a uh, special music, which is now. <laughs>
Lot was Abraham's nephew. These people are descendants of Abraham. So there's nothing like a battle with relatives. <laughs> nothing like siblings getting at it. Now, I didn't have that problem because I'm the only child. Uh, the Bart's family in Maryland got along great. My dad and his brothers, they were all farmers. In those days, you had to farm together. You didn't have enough equipment for yourself, so uh, I'm not used to that. But there can be pretty good battles among relatives. So Moab and Ammon were Lot's descendants. Malseer was Esau's descendants. Esau and Jacob. So this threat that they're getting came from neighbors that were relatives. And in the story, we're going to see it later on unfold, when Israel left Egypt going to the promised land, these people battled them. And they wanted to wipe them out. And God said, don't bother them. So now, Jehoshaphat the king is saying, Lord, if you let us wipe them out, we wouldn't have this trouble. Isn't it interesting when people try to give God advice? You ever hear people say, Lord, if you've done this or that? Now, I don't know about over here, but over in front of county, God's never made a mistake. He's never made a mistake here. So there's kind of this first thought, oh, our God, will you not judge them, Lord? When are you going to straighten out this mess we're in? Injustice in society. Do we have injustice in our society today? Uh, I've never seen an election like this last election. Uh, I've, I've never seen things going on in America like I'm seeing now. Uh, we've never had COVID-19. Can you, uh, if we would explain last December, first Sunday of December, what first Sunday this year would be December? You say, what is COVID-19? What's a face mask? What is social distancing? So, and I'm not totally sure. I believe all the information I hear. I'm not sure we're getting all the truth. So you wonder, do you know of people that are crooked? And they just get away with it. And so he said, will you judge? Will you bring a right decision? Abraham even said, shall not the judge of all the earth be right? Do we always agree with court decisions? Do we always agree with all Supreme Court decisions? Or... In our election, the judges are making decisions about this voting. They're making decisions about suitcases that show up magically. I don't know what's in those suitcases. And so you think, what's going on? And we're saying, God, when are you going to straighten them out? Let's go further on. In Habakkuk, it says, Thou art of pure eyes, then to behold evil, you cannot look on iniquity. Wherefore, look you upon those that deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devour man more righteous than he. When the Babylonians were thinking and planning to destroy Jerusalem, the Babylonians were idol worshipers. The Jews are Jehovah worship. An idol is nothing. Jehovah is everything. And Habakkuk is saying, Lord, how could you let those idol-worshipping heathen come in here and destroy our holy city? Well, if you read Second Chronicles, that holy city had been desecrated by people who claimed to be God. God's people. And so sometimes God uses a heathen to chasten believers. Now, Babylon also got their medicine later on. That's another story altogether. Isaiah 64, 1. Maybe I'm the only one that does this. Oh, that y'all, you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains would flow down at your presence. God, if you would just shake the Catoctin Mountains 
and King David. But don't shake it too much because we only live about five miles away. <laughs> God could you just roar across the mountain, but spare her one. <laughs> Couldn't you just, just do it? God is merciful. God is not only that they should perish, that all should become repentant. There is judgment coming. No one gets away with it. Someday they will stand before the Lord. Psalm 73, King David had this. Well, let's look at King David and King Saul. What's the Bible say about David? A man after God's own heart. What's the Bible say about King Saul? He disobeyed the Lord. And here is King Saul chasing King David. And David is saying, I'm not going to touch him. But could you do something to King Saul? And then we have this verse in Psalm 73, 16 and 17. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went to the sanctuary of the Lord. Then I understood their end. You know why I'm irritated about the swamp in Washington, D.C.? But I don't lose sleep over it. Someday, God is going to drain the swamp. Someday, Christ is going to come back, and we believers are going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. As I tell people wherever I'm going, in the millennium, I've already asked the Lord, Lord, I want to rule the Katahdin Mountains for a thousand years. So just that <laughs> section from Maryland down to a Gamble Park, that part, I've asked the Lord. Now, if he puts me in Saudi Arabia, that would be fine. <laughs> and you can, you can rule over here in Carroll County for a thousand years. But God will straighten out this. Maybe, it'll never, maybe the, trump, the swamp will never be drained until the Lord does it then. But people are not getting away with things. There's injustice. And so we begin this crisis with, it's just not fair. And you know people in business that just cheat, do things dishonest. Our daughter worked for a company in Pennsylvania. And as long as she worked there, she realized there was illegal business practices going on. One day, uh, she had to answer the phones. So the boss told my daughter, if so-and-so calls, tell him I'm not here. She said, this is what I'm going to do. If so-and-so calls, I'm going to tell him, you're in the office and you said you're not here. <laughs> she began to realize that they were sending bills to companies that they didn't do the work. So she left ahead of time because he finally caught up with them and he had some free housing in uh, some federal facilities if you know what I'm talking about. He caught up with him eventually. But she's thinking right now, that guy's cheating. And thankfully she got out there before it happened. So justice does come. Injustice in society. My second point is inability in ourselves. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? That's injustice, but now, for we have no might against this great company. We're not able to do it. We get in a project and we just simply can't do what needs to be. We help. That's fine, that's all. Now you know where I'm going. There's the road map. So we have no might. We're not up, we're not up to it. There are things that we just simply can't do. Romans Seven says, in my flesh dwells no good thing. To will is present, but how good form I find not. When I was a young preacher, I used to hear old preachers, you know, 20 years younger than I am, who would say that they didn't have the ability, and I think, by the time I get there, I'm going to have my act together. My comment is this. I do have my act together. I just don't know where I put it. <laughs> so maybe you're like that. A classmate of mine said something last week. It's weird being the same age as old people. 
So I, I'm not sure what that means, but, but we don't have that ability. We can't live the Christian life on our own. We can't be saved on our own. People may wonder, how can I get to happen? Getting to happen is important. It's major. But you can't get there on your own. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So the first thing in getting to heaven is realize you can't get there on your own. You don't know how to get there. There's no ability to get there. And you realize that Christ died on Calvary's cross. He paid our sacrifice. He paid the way. When I had my stint put in my chronic artery, I didn't know how to put it. I didn't know what a stint was. I didn't know I had a carotid artery. I got four of them, apparently, when the doctor says, to the front, to the back. I didn't need to know. And Patty doesn't even know about the surgery. The doctor knows. So we don't need to know these things. We have God that will show us this way. Salvation, you accept the Lord as your Savior. You realize He died. You accept His sacrifice. You ask Him to be your Savior. Accept Him as one who died for you, and he will give you eternal life. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. How do we get thus far along? God has helped us. I was one time witnessing to a fellow what what you, you would say, I was telling him about answers to prayer. And we understand in this group, when we talk about answer to prayer, what that means. But this fellow was an agnostic. And he said, that's not it. There's no God. That's just luck. And I said, how long do you want me to tell you about God? It's not luck. Somebody said, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck. So it's not that. It's God intervenes in our lives in great ways, not sufficient ourselves, it's of the Lord. Zechariah 4, not by might, no by power, no by spirit, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Friends of the Bible Church, over all these years, I guess numbers of how many crises this church has faced since it started. How is it still here? The sufficiency and the power of the Lord. Jeremiah says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, or the mighty man in his might, or the rich man in his riches. But he that glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. I am the Lord. I exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. So we, we're not up to it. We don't have to be. Christ is. Have you ever prayed to the Lord and the Lord says, I have to think about that. Put that on hold. Now, when you order something, sometimes it's put on hold. But I've never had God say, well, uh, God is, when I pray, God has never said, hmm, no one ever thought of that. <laughs> God knows everything, and our insufficiency, inability, is an opportunity for the Lord to work in our lives. And the greatest victories I've had in my life is when I wasn't able to do anything. And the Lord did it, so he would receive the glory. But the next point is indecision in our situation. We don't have any money against this great company. Neither know we what to do. You ever find yourself in a situation you just don't know what to do? You don't know who to depend on. You don't know who to call. You don't know what to do. I guess that partly was true with Patty at first. First vertigo. What do we do? Uh, and then I guess some doctors didn't know. Thank the Lord, some doctor did finally know. What do we do now? Uh, when you have a situation like Patty, and they say, you know, take a pill and call me in the morning. That is not going to work. And so, we don't know what to do. James says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, we find situations in life, we believe God, we know the Lord, but we just simply don't know what to do. Uh, even around the house, I, I try to always know people that I can depend on that know more about something than I do. We don't know what to do. The reason why this verse is important 
and our life, the life of me. I read my Bible through every year, starting Genesis 1-1 and January 1. On April 25, if you're reading through the Bible in a year, you're going to be in this passage of Scripture. So I was reading my Bible through in a year, just as the plan was. But there's something unique about this verse. We had had our home for sale in Atlanta, Maryland, near D.C. We had bought the land and had a house built for us in Thurmont. And so we were able to get a, a contract to sell the house down in D.C. on a Monday. The following Monday, we go to Thurmont, we buy a house. Now, what's the problem? You sell a house one week, you take the money in the bank, and you pay off the mortgage of the new house the next week. So that Monday, settlement was at 2 p.m. My wife and I uh, had cleared out the house. At 12 noon, we were out of our house, locked the door. My van and the car, I'm driving the van, she drove the car. That thing was so, those vehicles were packed so much. We look like white Sanford and Sons. <laughs> Just enough speech for us. And we had planned. And from noon to 2 p.m., we were in Greenbelt, Maryland. We are going to go to a, a, a little restaurant, go for a little hike on the Greenbelt Park. It's an exercise place. And just relax for two hours. Go to the settlement, get the check, go to the bank. We're on our way. Now, what could go wrong? Phone call. Realtor, a pastor, come from our church. The settlement has been postponed. They don't have their financing in order. Things we began to unravel rather quickly. So we had plans to go to ferry that evening, which we didn't, couldn't cancel, so we did. Uh, we had a walkthrough of our new home in Thurmont on Tuesday. I went to the loan. We had made an application, but we hadn't finalized the loan. Just in case. I almost felt it was lack of faith. But I called the realtor. Hey, are we on? No. No settled on. I asked them, are the loan coming? When do I have to decide? They said, noon. 11.45. <laughs> we take out the loan. We go to Pennsylvania. And that, that next Monday is coming. The next morning, which would be, would be uh, on a Wednesday morning, on May 25, I did what I always do. I get up and I read my Bible. When I got to this verse, I stopped and said, Lord, that verse is us. I mean, what do you do? I don't have any ability to loan that person the money. I'm not, I'm not a bank. I want the check, not the loan. I don't know what, the, what do you do if your house doesn't sell? We're now an hour north of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So I read and I said, Lord, we don't have any might. We don't know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. So I finished my devotions. My son all came in and said, Pop, I'm cutting down three trees next to the house. Could you hold the rope, make sure it doesn't <coughs> fall into the house? So we went out, cut down tree one, cut down tree two, getting ready to put the rope on tree three. Phone rang. Hey, Pastor, Selman is at 2 p.m. in Green Bell if you can make it. I had told him before, give me four hours, I'll be at Selman. I don't care if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You can give me any 24 hour day, I'll be there. Looked at my watch, 9.30, we were at Selman. Selman went fine. We were able to make everything worked out. But there was a point. What do you do? The next point is the answer. Our eyes are upon you. We belong to the Lord. He doesn't want well, us to figure out all these things on our own. I think the Lord wants us the intensity of our focus. Do we really Depend on the Lord. Where it's always, I can do it myself. Now, part of the problem I have as a marts growing up on a farm, we were independent. 
We did everything ourselves. We had a John Deere tractor. One time, it wouldn't run right. My dad watched what the mechanic did, and the mechanic never came back. <laughs> because my dad figured out how to, how to adjust things. So I grew up on the dirt road. Anywhere time, if you want to get out, you shovel your way out. You don't wait for somebody else. So I kind of grew up independent, doing your own. And now I'm in situations I can't do it. But our focus is on the Lord. And I trust that God will help folks here at Frizzleburg Bible Church. Keep your eye on the Lord. Look to Him. Psalm 123 is the eyes of a servant look into the hand of the master. And the eyes of the maiden on the hand of the mistress. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that He have mercy upon us. I'm convinced now at my age, been in ministry 58 years. And I get myself in jams and I'll think, how did I do that? I believe that God allows all of us to get in situations that only He can solve, so only He gets the glory. So when we get through this and say, like, man, I did a good job. Only one time have I ever boasted about my sermon. A couple of years ago, uh, after Sunday morning, on the way home, I told my wife, you know, I think that was the best sermon I've ever preached. I felt I was, I was really into it. My wife, you know, it's insane. You're on steroids. <laughs> so I quit bragging about how great I am, how great God is, how great thou art, not how great we are. So we had mercy on the Lord. Psalm 25, my eyes are ever toward the Lord. He shall pluck my feet out of the net. I think there are forces today coming stronger and stronger against the church. This COVID-19, I think, is a trial run for the future. They're closing down churches. Other places, there's a, I'm not a Catholic, a Catholic church in California that seats 1,000 people. They're allowed one person at a time. Now, I'm not a Catholic, but that's not right. What happened, someone from the county was watching the back door of the church and four people came out at the same time and they were fined. So there are people that hate God, hate the Bible, hate church, but greater is he than us than he is in the world. But our eyes are upon the Lord. Psalm 121, I will lift my eyes up to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we're watching today, we're looking to the Lord to lead us and direct us. Then Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. I don't know if this church has ever had a choir or sometime they have a choir. But one thing that we, we always have in the people, when you're in a choir, you focus on the choir director. Now, I know it's fun when you have children's choir. And then great? Little kids go, hi, Bobby. Hi, hi, Grandpa. <laughs> no. But when adults do it, it's pretty bad. Bobby <laughs> <laughs> had a guy that, that had, he had a good voice. But I could tell he wasn't watching the director. Because when she would cut off, I could still hear another syllable going. And he wasn't watching the director. Watch the director when you're singing in a choir. And for us, watch the Lord at all times. A verse that I claim all the time, James 1.5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives the old man liberate not praise not. And it should be given him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, my mother's favorite verse. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. God is leading us. Let's keep our focus on him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full on his glorious face, and the things of earth will grow strangely 
him, the land of his glory and grace. So we focus on the Lord. My final verse, Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I don't know what God has for this church as far as pastor. We're spiritual. We'll know God's leading us. I'm available, but so are other people. And God is not forsaking you. He won't do it now. Let's make sure that we keep our eyes always on the Lord. And it's not true. Father, we give thanks today for your grace and kindness. Thank you that we keep our eyes on you. And you know what's best. You will lead this church in ways that will glorify you. Again, pray for Patty and to guide the medical profession in that surgery. And we pray that we'll soon see her back in this church as a walking testimony of your goodness and kindness to us. Those that don't know Christ, we pray to look to you, call upon you in salvation. We pray in Christ's name.